Nick makes objects that are shallow and surface focused, the forms simplified. The ceramic objects and animations are tied to specific memories from his past and attempt to see those memories from the perspective of another. Nick studied ceramics at the University of the Arts and holds a master's degree from the Tyler School of Art. He is a resident artist at the Clay Studio in Philadelphia. Nick. Hi. Um, so I'm going to let my computer introduce me because it knows me better than anyone at this point. It is all very surface, these glimpses into others lives that are not exactly real, not exactly false. What is between his screen and mine? I saw a void between space. Something is there. It can enter our personal space, take from us. It has no identity, it is skinless, faceless, it steals from us to create. I want the objects to exist in the physical as well as in the virtual, which is real. How do things change when you see them only on a screen? Are they real? What happens when something exists in both spaces? I grew up playing games. Were they real? A projection of self into another world. I wanted to be a part of those places. Touch those objects. Talk to those people. I'm forcing those things to be more tangible for recreation. Are they real? How do things translate from a virtual space? It is shallow. What about when it has depth? What is real? When does it become fake? When does a copy become original? How does your perspective change the way it's viewed? Through whose eyes are we viewing it? Are they real? When does the third person become the first person? It has gone cold. It was hot. This will last forever. How does it change when seen in a new context? When it is destroyed through change, will it ever be recognizable again? These are objects of power, attained when most needed. Is it real? Experiences that exist only in a mind's eye. How do you view a memory? Is it real? Is it historically accurate or skewed by current perspective? If we tagged our memory would we recognize ourselves through the eyes of another? Am I real? Reach out and touch someone, only one in the crowd. How do you connect with one person when sharing with all? Is it real? Life is still, still life. I see value, I see worth. Does it have substance? Is it real? Can it help her? Will it heal her? Does the belief in its power make it real? So fragile, so vulnerable, it will not fall. Is it real? This was real, I was there. Such beauty. But is it still real even as a recreation of a memory? I am you, this was now, take a bite. It's only a dream, you will wake up and know where you are. No response, a friendly ghost. It happened, I have pics, it was real. I saw you first, it always begins this way. You did nothing wrong, you were real because you died. Time has slipped, is it real? Two became one, split and wore the skin of another. Never had a chance, just die. Ghosts aren't real, still don't haunt me. You need substance, you need skin. The skin doesn't fit you, that face is loose, not special. Just another copy, which one is the real one? Time has stopped, five years ago, I see you scrolling, that memory next to the cliff, the same cliff, three years later. My face is different, the light has died, is it real? We had to go to an island to have a conversation, no communication anymore but we text every day, don't let the light go out, text me when it goes dark. Stop looking down at me. Look up at you. You are real. Okay. Uh, <laughs> ah, thank you. Thanks. That was Alex.
He's a very nice person. Um, so I was raised Jehovah's Witness. Um, when I was a child, I believed the world was going to be destroyed. And a new world was going to be created in its place. A perfect paradise with no pain or death. And it happened. The world as we know it has changed. In the beginning, we created the heavens and the earth. This is the Genesis. <laughs> this is the Eden. And then we made beings in our own image. The first person is blank. This is a project I did called Recreation First Person, an installation of 40 some ceramic objects and 14 animations in an immersive environment. The goal of this project was to strip away the identities I have absorbed from others, to become the first person again, turn off the comments section. It's a space between two screens where anything is possible. I was looking at the way three-dimensional space is depicted on screens. A grid defines it. I was looking at the inventory screen. How objects are contained within that space. This is what I carry with me. This is my inventory. My inventory is full. I am overburdened. I cannot move. I don't want to play this character anymore. I want to reset this game. Game over. Continue. Why are you being so cryptic? Do you think it makes you seem mysterious or something? Um, it's called poetry. Look it up. Uh, so the objects are like a semi-analog version of the way we create things in 3D modeling programs. It's uh, texture mapping, photographic skin over basic polygonal forms, using slabs, and custom ceramic decals. Here are a few examples. So this can get pretty complicated sometimes. Um, Three-dimensional forms are confusing when flattened. But I'm a Photoshop wizard. So I was thinking about how we interact with these virtual spaces. I thought about haptic suits and VR headsets, but mixing that with uh, ritualistic objects like death masks. This is my avatar. Here anyone can wear my face. This was in the window fronted gallery. Here you're a voyeur of a voyeur of a voyeur. I wanted to invert the typical way we look at online content. So instead of looking down, you were inside the screen looking up. A lot of our entertainment now is from a first person perspective. So in games and in social media, like Instagram stories, we project ourselves into the body of another, see the world through their eyes. The animations take, use this perspective. Here's one called A Brighter Light. They are recreations of memories I share with one other person, but from their perspective. I wanted to see it from another side to understand it better see it through their eyes. I take from a lot of sources. I try to find connections between psychology, mythology, and pop culture. I take from art history. Here's creation and recreation. I use images that have stayed with me from games I played as a kid wanted to reference different genres of games, like 
racing games. This is a dark ride. Boy and his bob, <laughs> boy and his blob, his malleable friend. Mix that with a boxing game. A wish for an easy fix. The animations replicate life with all the dualities and the insecurities and self-doubt. The bully is inside my head is in the comments section now. I take a lot from mythology and the common themes there. We are creating new worlds, stealing the power of creation, biting the apple. Taking the fire. Trying to find our way in the labyrinth where every choice matters. One of the main themes in mythological stories is hubris. Do we have the ability to avoid flying too close to the sun? I wanted to see things from as many sides as possible. How do we create ourselves? We both follow and influence. We craft our own image. We make our own avatar. And then we watch it as we interact with the world. We are both subject and objects in this place. Here's the character creation screen. How masculine should I be? How feminine? Maybe somewhere in between, or something completely different. LOL, we get it. You are having an identity crisis. Go home, nobody cares. You should block that guy. <laughs> Uh, we are malleable potential, a blob of unformed clay. The original Gollum. Adam and Eve continually reproducing in Eden. Who was I in the beginning? Strip away a mother, a father, a brother, a lover a close friend, a mentor. This is the hand that takes. Our social media presence is so surface. Images create a memory that Facebook will never forget. Pics or it didn't happen. We choose the perspective we are viewed from. The objects reflect this way of being. They are surface focused. The form is crude, but enhanced through a thin layer of images trying to give it depth. They are fake, or rather, they are hyper real. Thank you. <laughs>